Welcome to episode three of Living by Design, where real people bring real questions about how to live, create, and communicate in alignment with their human design. I'm your host, Chris Prochaska. I help entrepreneurs, executives, and speakers who have a provocative message get crystal clear on what and how they are communicating so that their message lands. It's all about keeping it real and authentic and above all, natural to their design. So today's guest is a generator or builder in human design business terminology, and she is up to major creation, but also major transition. She's in the process of moving from one coast of the United States to another. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about how she can follow her own interior guidance, her own internal authority to navigate this large transition in her life and in her work. Welcome, Julia. Hey, welcome everyone. I'm so excited you're joining us this week. I have a very special guest, Julia Armet. She is truly just, hi, yeah, just what a beautiful soul. I met her about a month and a half ago-ish at a Rich Litvin coaching intensive down in San Diego and just immediately connected around energy and energy leadership, which is something that, a tool that she uses and and uh, she connected around the intel- and energetic energy intelligence that I talk about and just hit it off. And she is amazing. She is a performance coach and the founder of Higher Playbook at higherplaybook.com. I can't wait to hear uh, hear what you have to share with us today and then also get to know you a little bit and your design a little bit more too. Welcome. Thanks, Chris. I um, just love the way the universe brought us together and yeah. um, just knowing just in terms of what we share in common and how we were able to just resonate at that intensive. Mm -hmm. It just kind of shows the way that the cards fall. It's like you find yourself in the right situations. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about, I like to hear kind of where you've been and then what you're, where you're moving to literally, I know you're moving um, physically, but also just, you know, in your, in your work and what you're creating. So, but give us a little, slight little backdrop of where you've been and and where you're moving towards. For sure. I allow connection to be like a compass for me. And um, when I look at just my whole life and just track that journey throughout, I've always followed this desire for connection. Mm -hmm. I'm an identical twin. And so that really informed my adolescence. Up until the age of 17, I had an automatic best friend. And then when I moved to New York at the age of 17, I studied identity. And at the same time, I built a career in media, built a career in hospitality. Mm-hmm. And throughout, I was really getting to understand who I was through the people I was serving. Yeah. I then met a childhood icon of mine who is the advice columnist for Elle magazine. Mm-hmm. And she became a mentor. And I became involved with her dating company. Yeah. I started off as a matchmaker and then I became the director of community. So today I am the director of community at a national matchmaking company. Mm-hmm. And then in 2018, I launched my own LLC, Higher Playbook, mm-hmm. purpose and performance coaching for people who are looking to use their self expression to make a difference in our culture. Mm. So from athletes to entrepreneurs. And it's really about connecting with your higher coach and yeah. really tap into um, more of your purpose and drive that forward with your performance and self-expression. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's so much fun. Who is your ideal client? Tell me who your ideal client is. This is some of the fun conversation we had in San Diego. My ideal client is someone who's super high conscious, very self-aware, Mm-hmm. very powerful in the sense of their talent, their status, but at the same time, as much as they've been super successful by external standards, mm-hmm. they're not spiritually fulfilled and they know that there's more. Yeah. And so what we do is we partner together and um, my whole thing is from the inside out, tapping into your voice and using your voice to just make a difference in the way the world works. So mm-hmm. it's um, the rebels, the people who are rebels with a good cause, want to yeah. flip society on its head. 
Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's awesome. So what are you creating moving forward? And where is that flowing for you? Because we're going to pop over and look at your design here in just a minute, but I kind of want to get a sense of like, yeah, what are you working on? What are you creating? Where is it flowing? And then we'll also look at where is it maybe not flowing? Where are you kind of like, dang, I keep bumping up against this thing because we can look at it maybe in the perspective of the design. I love that. Okay. So for me, when I think about what I'm creating, higher playbooks by ultimate creation, where when I came up with this concept of higher meets playbook, it's just taking spiritual concepts and then practically applying them. So um, projects that I'm working on right now would be Be Your Own Champion. It's a series where I'm featuring people who are really interesting, uncensored individuals. And conversation is something that just flows for me. So my gift of being able to connect the dots and use language as a tool to build relationships. I've always been great at that. I feel like um, effortless flow for me happens very much when I'm in the right environment. And um, thinking about where I've been being in New York for the past 13 years to where I wanna go, which is California, Mm -hmm. and realizing that the part of me that feels very in flow is my body when I'm in that environment of sun, flowers, and slower pace, Mm -hmm. I'm a very slow moving creator. I like Mm -hmm. to really sit Mm -hmm. and forget about time and create without the external pressure. Mm -hmm. I feel like that influence of society that says go, 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 that has me often um, being jolted from just my natural creative process. Mm -hmm. So I'd say um, right now as I consider what has worked well, which is showing up, conversing, building relationships Mm -hmm. versus what stunts me is that external pressure to go, go, go. Right. Everything's always like, get a client, get a client, get a client. But my whole thing is law of attraction. And I feel Mm -hmm. like um, putting myself in an environment where that's the way the world works in the environment would be better than um, being in an environment like New York that's so regulated by big business. Yes. Right. Right. I love that. Okay. So let's look at your design and see where some of that is, you know, kind of already like what is, um, uh, for lack of a better way of saying like what's most natural for you and where that's working and where you're already perceiving that energy. This is the first time you've looked at your design, isn't it? I mean, maybe you've seen it, but we haven't talked about your design. There's no, we haven't been looked at it, had conversation about it, right? Yeah. I'm excited to see this. This is amazing. Yeah, it's super fun. So a couple things. One that just pops out for me right away is that you're looking at, <clears throat> I like to, I like to color on here, is you're looking at your generator type and the, and the strategy is to respond. And so it's really is about, and I've watched you do this. It was so amazing. Like you are effortless in your ability to connect with people. I've, I've really never seen anything like it when we were, we we're at the dinner table and the way she's connecting with the waiter who, who really was super cute. And you were just like, I mean, I just was, I was like, damn, watch her in action. Look at that. You just so like, so genuinely like, who are you? Tell me about yourself, how, you know, and, and yet, there was no sense of manipulation or, or, you know, like trying in order to, it was simply like super curious, who are you, you know, and you were responding to the people around you and asking them questions and that deep curiosity. It was, it was just, it was really cool. Super fun. And so when you say, you know, I'm all about connection, it's like, that's my thing. Totally. I mean, it really, it comes through. It's not just something that you say, it's like, it's who you be. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. I think um, that knowing this about just how I like to respond to my environment, it can be a challenge as an entrepreneur where everybody's like, okay, here's the way you go about client acquisition. And for me, I've always been like, okay, universe, invite people in. And then I respond to the people who arrive. And sometimes I just feel like, am I doing growth properly considering 
as entrepreneurs, there's so much external dialogue to basically give you an external playbook. Whereas my higher playbook says, oh, my life went out. <laughs> are, you in a, are you in a New York blackout? Is that what's happening? <laughs> You're on a timer. <laughs> My higher self says, Julia, wait to respond, but then my inner um, self gets doubted by just the external influence that always mm. puts deadlines, deliverables, expectations on us. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's interesting, you were talking about that environment. So, you know, just to give you a little overview again, so kind of the cliff notes way of looking at this. So think of it like a circuit board and everything that's colored in, it doesn't matter what, what color it is right in this moment, but everything that's colored in is turned on all the time, 24 seven. And everything that's white, whether it's one of these centers or functions, and I interchanged um, the wording a little bit because there's like, the human design calls it fun, uh, centers. And then in the business terminology, we call it functions. So I'm constantly going back and forth between the two, but they're the same thing. Um, wherever that's white, or these are uh, channels or strengths, um, and wherever there is uh, that white area, we take in the energy of others and we amplify that energy or we think often that it's ourselves, right? So we're taking in information and energy from around us all the time. And that's changing our design. It doesn't change it completely because who we are, the design stays the same no matter what. But it does, um, it, it can influence how we're being with our design, right? And one of the things that you were talking about is your environment, like be really being in the right environment. And this, uh, this is identity and direction. And I have this also undefined. So we call it undefined if it's white, which means that it turns on and off depending on who we're with. And it's fascinating because people who have this colored in have a very, um, they have a very consistent way of being in the world. Uh, if we had a party and somebody had that color, my husband has it colored in. Like if we had a party and invited all his friends, parent, family, everybody who's known him all his life, everybody who's there would be like, oh yeah, that's Mike. That's him. Like, you know, and then you and I, because we have it undefined, if we had a party and we invited everyone that we know from all walks of life, people would be like, why the hell are they here? <laughs> You know, and someone might say, oh, Julia is this. And someone might say, oh, well, no, she's actually this. Or what about this? And, and we would, we can connect with all kinds of people because we're not fixed in who we are. We actually, we kind of start to know who we are by being with different people and going, oh, you know what? I really like that aspect. That feels good. It feels good for me to be in this person's environment. They feel congruent. They feel like, um, authentic right and and then we might go i i like that i i'm gonna take on a little bit of that that feels good to me and then we might be with someone else and go "Ooh, no that doesn't feel good right that yeah. so on the one hand this is a part of your gift is that you can feel and reflect back to someone their authenticity and also you have a lot of flexibility we have a lot of flexibility we can connect with lots of different people in lots of different walks of life because we're just naturally curious about who are you? I don't, we don't have a fixed way of being in the world such that we only really like to hang out with certain kind of people. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And I love being in rooms of people where I can observe where when people speak and I see mirrors and I also just feel energy. Mm -hmm. I often can honestly feel my body like, oh, I'm gravitating towards this person. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm curious to know more about this person. Mm -hmm. And so I find that the excitement of being in a new environment mm -hmm. is always just the possibility of connecting with somebody who's going to inspire a part of me that I didn't know was there. Yeah. So I, I think this is making perfect sense. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and the environment also has to do then, so there's that, um, you know, the environment of people, right? The, the, the crowd of people, the caliber of people. And I mean, caliber, you know what I mean? Not like 
people are better than or less than, but just energetically congruent. That's when I, you know, high caliber people for me are people that are energetically congruent and come from a a higher frequency, if you will, or vibrational state. It also has to do literally with our physical environment. So if you were to walk into, let's say, a networking event or someplace and you walk in and the environment itself didn't feel right to you, it, you would be like, how fast can I get out of here? You know, And you probably would not even connect with your ideal people because if they're there hanging out, you'd be like, and they all seem to be fine, you'd be like, these are not my people. You know, unless you were walking out the door with somebody else and you, you looked at each other and you're like, yeah, that I had to get out of there. And, you know, like if you and I walked out and we're like, God, that was so intense. You and I'd probably go have drinks because we'd be like, really, the reason why it didn't fit, it, the, we both don't fit there. So we know we're probably, you know, good, you know, to hang out. Does that make Did sense you know to you? Justin Bieber song, I don't care. Yeah, I think I've, Yeah. Yeah. So that song came on, I'm listening to the lyrics of that song, and I'm like, this is me at a party where, yeah, I'm on the outside looking in, even though I'm at the party. Right. And sometimes I'm like, I'm here for 30 minutes, I'm going to exit the party because the level of connection that I seek yeah. is often not what I experience when I walk into certain rooms or certain parties. Right. So having the right party is something important to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, because... It's again, it's a full body experience environment. It is the room that you're in. It's the, it's the state that you're in. It's the, the people, it's the nature, it's the, you know, all the materials, you know, it's, there's so many different levels to that. And you'll, you will feel most yourself, like you can relax when you're in the right environment. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I yeah. So, yeah. So if you walk into a place and you're like, uh, you know, this, uh, uh-uh, uh, because you're a gut person, right? The sacral here, you're a, a sacral authority. You walk in, you're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, this is, this isn't right. Full permission, walk out. You don't have to, you don't have to try to rationalize it. You don't have to make up a story. You don't even have to try to figure out what it is energetically. No, it's a no. And then you leave and it's fine. And I think that's the, I was just doing an interview earlier about intuition and our knowing and our perception of energy and that, you know, oftentimes it's socially inconvenient to know what we know and to act on what we know because, you know, it's sort of like, well, I paid, I should stay or, but what if, what if my ideal person is here and I miss out, you know, we have all these rationalizations and logical things. And yet if we are crawling out of our skin, we're not actually going to show up and be our authentic self and be grounded and be willing and ready to receive anyone who's yeah. there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Perfect sense. Yeah. You know, like as I'm thinking of just specific examples, but this is, this is very true to my reality in a place like New York where there's always things that you walk into and you're like, should I even be here? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Give me a, can you give me an example of one that maybe you either overrode it where you were like, you had this gut feeling in your body and your awareness, and then you overrode it mentally because your, you know, your mind is very active. Like you, you know, it's turned on all the time. Right. So tell me a little bit about that. So I invested a hundred dollars for a Friday night event at the, um, called uh, Jew- Jewish National Fund. And mm-hmm. it was an event where it was really a nice environment upstairs during the service. And then when I went down to the party downstairs, immediately I thought, okay, I really am not knowing what to do with myself. Where yeah. like, okay, I'm here, okay. Mm-hmm. And so I sat myself down at a table for 45 minutes and I, sat there for probably 45 minutes longer than I would have preferred. Yeah. <laughs> I remember feeling this energetic drain where every minute that I stayed there, I'm like, you're rebelling, Julia, against what you know gives you full. And so I left and I felt drained and I felt like, Whew, like who am I? Like, where do I belong? Why am I here? And it was this spiritual crisis. 
just because I was at a party and didn't feel like I belonged. Yes. Oh my God. That's such a perfect, I love that example. And this unconscious trait right here, and it's unconscious because it's, it's, it's red. So we call it part of the design. It's unconscious to you. Um, whereas, you know, the traits that are black over here are, are sort of more conscious. It's more like your personality. Um, so the 10 is all about your identity and you sort of going to the beat of your own drum and your own, you know, having your back. It's literally like having your back and integrity with yourself. It's all about really knowing yourself, having an integrity with yourself and bumping up against that, you know, in places. And, and you know, when you sat there 45 minutes longer than you, you know, probably wanted to, you were bumping up against that, like, this is not my place, but probably going, I should, I paid for it. I, you know, I don't want to be rude, but you know, maybe there's a reason why I'm here. And maybe the, like all of those logical, rational reasons. And yet if you're not in the right place, you will feel lost. Yeah. Like when we are in the wrong place, we feel really lost yeah it's a trigger and um afterward i i feel first this like energetic defeat like for energy leadership folks like that level one but then i get like this level two of like oh like i'm frustrated why is this the way it is mm -hmm. and um i can relate to athletes because sometimes i feel like i'm playing a game and mm -hmm. athletes especially in team dynamics where they don't belong you can mm -hmm really see the same intensity, that frustration, that like, like, no, this isn't the way it should be. And I'm very much at peace, calm, just super chill. Yeah. So it's a different sort of just trigger for me to feel that intense knowingness and frustration around knowing that I fit in and yet not fitting in. Yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly. Like knowing what your strengths are, knowing what your contribution is, right? Knowing that you could, and yet at the same time, like, why is it not working? Why yeah. is this not happening here for me, right? So, and it's interesting because, um, you know, what's popping for me around this right now is that in your design, so you have a split definition, and what that means is you could think of it like this is like, this is an island of energy because these two are connected to one another. And then you have another little island of energy down here, but they're not connected to one another with a solid line. You see that they're not directly connected. Uh, just like this is a solid line here and this is a solid line, right? So what happens is you have these two uh, bridging bridges right here like it i have this one so i actually bridge your split right here and i have the 62 i bridge the split for you here so when you and i are together all of this gets colored in our throat gets colored in it's easier for us to talk to each other we we have access to our voice in a different way um let's see where else do we get i bridge this split right here for you so then this gets colored in that's kind of fun. So what happens is that we're communicating, right, energetically first and foremost, and in our design, we, com we complete each other's charts. So that's another thing of where sometimes we feel comfortable with people because, you know, those are electromagnetic connections. That's like we meet each other and we're like, yeah, I totally get that. And that can work really well. Like that can feel like, hey, we light each other up, or it can feel like, kush, kush, you know, you can probably see that, probably even matchmaking. You can see like, wow, they seem like they're really attracted to one another, but they're just, but you know, they, it's too many sparks. It's too much energy. It becomes overwhelming energy, right? Yeah. But one of the things coming back to this split um, is that you, that connection that you have always been about is you're, you're naturally seeking others who hook you up. You're naturally seeking for this island of energy to connect with this island of energy. It's so interesting because I do know a little bit about chakras, mm -hmm. but what I often get as feedback is you're so in your head, get in your body. Yep. And I, 
often I'm like, well, what do they mean? Because I just only know my own experience. But what I will say is a mantra that really sits well with me is integrate, integrate. Yeah. I just want to sink into my body. And sometimes I don't feel as attuned to feeling or desire or um, sometimes it's like the head versus the intuition. And I don't know if that's the language we would use here, but I, I love what you're saying about how people can actually create those bridges because mm -hmm. being in the presence of you and just conversing with you, I feel very seen, very heard, very connected. Mm -hmm. Just from the moment that we did dinner the first night that, that we met, mm -hmm. it's just very validating to know that it makes sense from a design perspective. Yeah, totally, totally. So how about we take a quick break and then I want to come back and show you a little bit more about this because I want to talk a little bit about that where people have said, you're so in your mind, you're so in your head and what that like what it takes for you to get down into your body and what that is about. So we'll just take a quick break. Are you clear what you're creating in the next 12 months or do you flip flop or maybe start strong then fizzle out? If this sounds like you, I have two resources for you. First is a clarity visualization session. It's a free downloadable guided visualization to not only help you connect with what your heart and soul truly want to create, you're also going to get clear if it's really your heart's desire or what you think you should create based on what other people say is important. This is so essential to creating the right goals that are worthy of you. You're also going to see how ready you are to take action on that dream or goal. For those of you who are clear on what you want to create, but you keep getting distracted, second guessing yourself and wondering why everyone else seems to make it look so easy while you struggle, I recommend the design synthesis session or ongoing coaching. The design synthesis session is similar to how I work with my guests here on the show, but we're going to go deeper and get even more fine tuned with your specific design than I have time to do here with my guests. You can also check out upcoming classes and programs to support you in your life and business. Now, back to the show. Okay, welcome back everyone. So we are talking with Julia about um, her design. We're talking about the split in the design here, the split definition. So you're just saying like, people say, oh, I'm always in my mind. I'm always, you know, thinking, thinking, and, and it's hard for me to get down in my body. And, you know, that you're like integrate, right? Is that the word you're saying? Like integrate, yeah. integrate. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on there and, and how to work with that and what that feels like. So it's interesting with this, we call this a wide split in that we, you need two gates to, um, or traits to have them colored in, in order to make a full connection. And the energy is strongest coming up this line right here, like it, it's a circuit right there. And so the energy is most potent for you to be seeking that connection. That's the fastest way to make that connection. And it's also the, um, the most pressure right there because it starts, the pressure always starts at the bottom and moves upward towards the throat. So we have, you have a lot of pressure to find a 48 and or a 62. And again, I have both of those. So immediately that's that recognition of there's a, there's an energetic match there. So when you're by yourself and you're just trying to create something and there's no one else around, you, you probably feel a little lost, like either way up in your head, always in your head, or maybe you're doing something like I got to take a bath or doing something that's physical, going a workout or something to get into your body. You're having to like work harder to get into the body. And as I've talked about, we don't need to go there very much. I don't know what your history is, but there's um, there, you know, sometimes when we're growing up and we have trauma, right, it makes it even harder to get into the body. And that does, that goes for every type. It doesn't matter what, but if there has been that, it, it, because your mind is defined and it's always going, it's just, it's, it can be safer up there, right? Than in the body. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense. And what I find interesting is I'm most creative when I'm moving my body. So mm -hmm. if I'm walking the East River, I can often walk 10 miles just like on a Saturday afternoon with yeah. my phone. Yeah. A lot of like creative work writing on yeah. my phone, yeah. but 
my body is moving as I'm going. Yes. Other times I'm just sitting there on my bed without any sort of external stimulus and I'm just sitting there like, what do I do right now? <laughs> but it's always in my power and I know how to shift myself so that I can express myself. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it really does meaning change my environment, move, put yourself in the presence of somebody else, turn on the TV, get excited about what you're seeing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And so your environment becomes even more important. So what's happening when you're walking across along the, the river, <clears throat> excuse me, is that there's other people passing by you. And so you're, even though you're not talking to them, you're in aura, meaning you're accessing they're, they're hooking you up. So with a design like yours, if you're feeling like you're in your head or you're feeling a little lost or you're feeling like, go work at a coffee shop or you can put headphones on. You don't have to talk to anybody, but just having other people around or walking or being around other people, going to the gym, whatever it is, when you have other people around, they'll hook you up and it's like, oh, I have, you have kind of have access to the whole of you. It's, a, it's easier. So I can see why when you're, again, also moving your body and you're focusing and you're in that, that um, environment where other people are there, you're accessing that energy and hooking it up. And yeah, when I'm in California, what I love to do is just sit at Alfred's yeah. in Brentwood. Yeah. And being at Alfred's, I find that I'm in my flow. Yeah. Where I could be out there at the coffee shop for five hours. People are passing through and sometimes I don't even notice them. Yeah. But I'm feeling that sense of belonging and flow by mm -hmm. just being present there. Yeah. Well, there's something about the vibe there. There's something about the people that come there. There's something about the setting, all of that, that has you go, ah, oh, this is me. And I totally get that because I can walk into a restaurant or I can walk into a, a someone's studio or something and I'm like, oh, this is home. And it's just like this sense of I can, I can be me here whatever me or whoever me is, I can, that's me. I can be that here. And we recognize that in space. We recognize yeah. that when we're there. Right. I love that. That's so cool. So, um, so what happens here also is that you're designed to make decisions with your gut, which is down here, not up here. We all, we know this, but in design, it points it out even more that the mind is not designed to make decisions. The mind can only be in the past or the future. It can't be in the present moment. The body is the present moment. And so your gut, your sacral has a response in the moment, in real time to whatever the stimulus is that's, that's there. And so um, you're like, uh-huh or uh-uh. Or if there's no sound at all, it's because maybe you don't have enough information or it's sort of like, I can't make sense of what is here right now. There's too, it, maybe it's too complex. There's too much, right? It's a very yes or no oriented answer. And so um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your decision making as you understand it up till now and kind of where have you struggled with that? Are you, do you tend to be like, oh, I got to process it in my mind for a while or tell me about that. I always know very quickly my assessment of something and people are like, oh, she's direct. Yeah. Because I'm like, uh-huh, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so when I think about how in the industry that I've been in, the tech industry for a long time, um, mm -hmm. it's all about data, all about numbers. And sometimes intuitively, as just such an expert connector that I am, mm -hmm. my intuition says, yes, no, uh -huh. yes, no. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, well, back it, back it up, back it up with something rational. Yep. I don't always have the rationality, but my yep. intuitive wisdom that I know is a gift of mine often is proven later. People are like, oh, she knew. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for other people to understand when I think we live in a culture right now where data takes precedence and um, intuition doesn't always receive the same, the same um, weight. Exactly. It's so funny. I was just doing a podcast earlier with a guy um, who's actually someone I coached for TEDx for an all around intuition and business. And we did a podcast. He interviewed me for that. And we were just talking about this because his whole thing was that, you know, we have to, 
it's not just about data. We have to be able to recognize patterns and use our intuition and bring the two together. And so it's a, the whole conversation was about that and his TED Talks about that. But here's what's interesting. So in the survival instinct or spleen area is where we can really look at intuition. So you have your gut, right? Which is uh-huh or uh-uh. And let's just note here that only 70% or I shouldn't say only, 70% of the population has this colored in consistently. That's us generators and manifesting generators. We make up 70% of the population. So when people say, just trust your gut, 70% of us totally know what that is. And the other 30% are like, I don't know what that is. Because there's lots, there's like six different decision-making strategies in design. You know, some people have, you know, they they have to emotional clarity. They have to wait for the emotions. You and I don't. We, we're not emotional decision makers. We're intuitive gut decision makers. But one of the things that you were just saying here is this 44 is patterns. And so there's pattern recognition, like super quick pattern recognition. And it also has a little sense of smell to it as well. So you can smell whether something is, you know, well, this just doesn't smell right. I can't, put my face, I can't tell you, it just doesn't smell right to me. You know, like you may even say that, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, I know. I'll leave situations if the smell isn't right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. You'll know your next, your next uh, partner, they'll smell right to you, right? Like that's it. Or your next place where you live. Like I've had the same thing where I walk into places and I'm like, uh-uh, that can't, the smell is off. I can't do it, you know? Yeah. So totally. Yeah, but it's, I love this. I mean, you're really, you, you bring up such a great point, which is we do live in a very data driven sort of mentally focused, like what are the hard facts? And yet there is this whole piece of the intuitive knowing and understanding how your intuition works. So big old stamp of validation, not that you need it, but I find that it's just sometimes fun to go, Oh yeah, hell yeah. I've just been doing that all my life. It's sweet. Like, Keep doing it. Do it more, right? Like stand in that power of your bot. Your I say this: your design is doing you. Like whether you're aware of it or not, you've been living it all your life, right? Seeking the connection, being in the right place fosters the right connections. Your gut, uh huh, or uh uh, and it really does say those things. Um, it's it's you've already been doing it. Right. And, but here's now just a little peek into, yeah, right on. Everything that you've been aware of is working and it's, it's in that flow. So, so smell and you're talking about the decision making. Yeah. What was the second factor with the decision making for the 44? So the fear of uh, the past. So the fear, there's a fear that's, a feel, uh, that's associated with that one. And it's the fear of the past. So there's this tendency to sort of always be looking over your shoulder. Like, I don't want that to happen again. You know, ooh, this smells like what happened to me before. I really don't want that to happen. And so what happens is that when you're always kind of like looking over your shoulder towards the past of what happened before, and you're always looking for the pattern to make sure you can stay at, you know, a couple steps ahead of it, then what happens is that you can, you can trip over the present moment and, and not be present and not be like fully in this moment of like what's happening right now. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. It almost reminds me of just the idea. We have assumptions that limit all line of vision and if yeah. we're based on a lot of what we think about just from the past experience it's not going to allow you to really fully access the reality that you're experiencing. Right. Exactly. And when you see it this way, you can understand that it's a mechanical thing. It's not like you, you know, you could do work and, you know, you could do tons of healing work and belief work and, and all of that and clear all this stuff and still kind of go, why am I struggling with this present being in the present moment and recognize like, Oh, this is, and this is how I say it. I'm like, Oh, this is just a design, you know, challenge. This is just a, like a quirk of the design. That's, that's a, that's part of what I'm here to not overcome, but to, I say that our design, the challenges of our design are the lock, like our whole design is what locks us into the matrix that we live in this reality. 
it's our experience of life and reality how we experience it how we express ourselves through it it's what locks us into it it's also the key it's also that when you see it and you go oh i i have a tendency to get out of the present moment because i'm always looking over my shoulder how can i just be aware of that and recognize that that's part of what i'm here to practice and yeah. to be more present from that and understand that it's not going to be the easiest thing for you to do. Yeah. It's like good. Cause you can then have the compassion to be like, Oh no, yes. it's my design and my design is perfect as is, but yes. it's really about that consciousness to make a decision knowing what your design would allow and then maybe what the environment could also allow. So it's just creating a new way of living, but knowing you're totally in alignment with who you are because your design says so. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And recognizing that it's not that we're locked into it, like we're limited by it, but that it, it is, again, I see it as the lock and the key. It's like our, it's our thing. And it's, and yet it, we can be liberated and enlightened through the design, not in spite of it, but because of it. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just curious, is there any other questions that you have or any ahas that are popping for you? And yeah. I like when I'm looking just at the top of the graph where it says right angle cross of service. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that's striking me, but I'm so curious what that incarnation cross means. Yeah. So the incarnation cross is your life theme. It's sort of like what you're, uh, uh, what you're, you're going to see this theme throughout your life. And it's going to show up and over and over and over again in your life. And so if we look at it, it's, there's four traits here, or gates that make up that cross. And so we have the 18 right here, which is the, your conscious sun. We have the 17, which is your conscious earth. And then we have the uh, 52, which is right here. And then the 58, which is right here. And so it's really looking, it's the, um, um, what do I say, the synthesis of all of those different traits together that make up that theme. And this, this cross of service, there are, um, there'll be other crosses of service that, but it'll have different numbers there. Um, so there's different ways of, um, what do I want to say? A slightly different energies around it and expressions of it. And um, I will, there's, I think, 290 some <laughs> combinations. I don't have them all memorized. But what I can do is I will send you your, I'll send you what that is after, we're, after we hang up. I'll send you a description of it. Because it's that's really, that's really cool. And I'm also looking at the frustration. Yeah. Where it says not self theme. Yeah. Would that be like my trigger? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm so glad you brought that up. So think about it this way, is that <clears throat> the way you th who you be in the world is what's consistently colored in, in your design. And when you get taken the energy of others and you get conditioned by them and then you act out of that, you're being your not self. It's your, your, it's conditioning. And so the way to know that you're sort of in that place is you're experiencing frustration. When you start to experience frustration, this is an indicator, uh, like a guidepost, a signpost that says, oh, I'm, I'm forcing something. I'm trying to initiate something versus respond to something. I'm not waiting for something to come to me. I'm trying to go out there and make it happen. And you know, really understanding this whole concept of waiting as a, as a generator type, waiting to respond. All the types have to wait in some way, shape, or form. And none of us like waiting. <laughs> like, nobody likes waiting. We're all like, huh. And we are taught, go out and make something of yourself. Like, go out and grab it and do it. But what happens is that when we're doing that, we're often doing that out of the not self and so what happens is that we get there and then we're like, why am I doing this? I've been working my ass off. I'm working so hard and it's not even, 
what, what am I doing? And we get lost, right? Just like you're talking about with your, your ideal people. It's like, I look how successful I am, but it's devoid of meaning. It's, it's maybe even devoid of me. Like, who am I in that? So that's that deep sense of frustration, or it could just be, you know, that surface frustration of like, God, I am working really, really hard and I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. It's so really, it's really cool because to be honest, when I see somebody out there in the world frustrated, I'm like, oh yeah, you resonate with me. I see frustration. And I'm like, oh, I want to talk to you. Yeah. I like when I understand that spiritual tension in people yeah. where they have the fighter in them to see yeah. more. Yeah. But it's like something that always draws me in because I can yeah. see myself in frustrated souls. Totally, totally. Because you resonate with that, right? I totally get the same thing. When I see somebody who's frustrated, I'm like, oh, I, I get you, sister. I know, or brother, I know exactly what you're feeling there. So let me tell you what the other side of it is where you will know that you're on track is satisfaction for the generator types, right? So each type has their own not self theme and, and, um, and their sort of self theme that they know they're on track. So satisfaction, you can work your ass off. You could be really, really busy. You can like, you know, get a, you know, it, you can be very busy and feel exhausted right at the end of the day. But when you lay your head on the pillow, there is a deep sense of satisfaction. Like what I did today felt good. It fed me. I, you, you're energized by it as much as you're exhausted by it, you know, and the exhaustion, you, you'll know that satisfaction too, is like you wake up the next morning and even though you were tired the night before, you still feel that sense of like, oh, hell yeah, that was worth it. You know, that's that deep sense of satisfaction. So when you're looking for in relationships, in your work, in your day-to-day -day activities, that's, is that sense of satisfaction. Have I used my life force energy, my sacral energy, have I used it in a way that not only is a contribution to others, but it feeds me as well. Because when you give away your energy and it's not, it's not, and it's not that that person has to reciprocate. It's, it's, you know, you contribute to the whole, but you get fed by that, that's satisfaction. Frustration is when you're like, I'm just giving it away and nobody seems to be, you know, whatever, it's not working. That's when you're like Sisyphus pushing that boulder up the hill and having it roll back down every day. So. I feel like such a deep sense of peace with like who I am. Mm. And then just sometimes when I find myself just being the generous soul that I am, mm -hmm. um, if the world doesn't reciprocate to the degree where I feel like, oh, wow, there are other people who will treat me the way that I treat them. Sometimes that creates like the spiritual, it's almost like a desire, but it's manifested as frustration because I know there could be more. I know there could be mm -hmm. just more celebration, more connection, more mm -hmm. shared experience. And sometimes people don't always mm -hmm. want to go there. And so it, yeah. it's frustrating to feel that disconnect. Yeah. Yeah. So just know that those are not your people <laughs> and that, that sense of your, you'll know those people and that will feel that connection. And that's where your greatest contribution can be. And that's where you want to put your energy, be, you contribute your energy because you will be fed by that. And that's when you lay your head on the pillow with that deep sense of satisfaction. So what should I look for? Meaning as I take this wisdom and I go back out there in the world and I'm moving in a couple months, what should my eyes go towards? Ooh, that's a really good question. I would actually say instead of your eyes, although I get that you're a visual person, so that makes sense to me, is um, I would practice, I, this is what I say to my, it, it's kind of funny, but I come up with weird little sayings, but I'm like, swing low, sweet chariot. You need to get down in your oh, body. Yeah. Oops, so well, like, not move things around, but it's yeah. amazing to me. Like, I love to dance. Yeah. And like, I love to sing. And so when I sing, I get low. Yeah. It's funny. So it's swing funny. low, get like, allow your mind, just tell your mind, hey, 
you know, go ahead, work that out. I'm just not going to pay attention to you right now. I'm going to get down in my body. I'm going to get low. I'm going to, you know, do things that sway, that get you grounded. You're naturally grounded. You're already a naturally grounded person. Um, it's, it's like you're, I just see you in your body, like down in your gut area and you're moving through life and you're letting your, your belly awareness, your gut awareness draw you to the next thing. So it's the way we create as generator types is step by step by step. And when we create from the mind, we're like way ahead of ourselves and then we get lost and then we're like, oh shoot. And when you really get like the next step will be revealed. We at the generator types, this, our aura is, uh, is very much um, generated by this sacral um, energy and it's a magnet. We are always pulling things to respond to towards us. We, we can't, when people say, I'm just sitting here waiting, it's like, yeah, you're a powerful magnet. You are literally bringing you the next step. So, you know, it's about like, wow, it feels like when I'm sitting at Alfred's, like it feels like that. And so then you're, you are seeking as you move through your life, ex what resonates to that? What matches that in your gut? And you're really kind of getting out of your head and into, let your, the gut guide you. It will show you the very next step and then the next step and then the next step. And sometimes you'll stand on a, a rock, you know, as if you're crossing a river, you'll stand there for a couple days and you're like, I don't know the next step. And that's often when us generators quit. We go back to the old shore where we were. We go back to our comfort or we jump in the water and we start swimming or we just say yes to someone or something because we have all this energy that wants to do something. So I say, go bake a cake, go for a walk, go. If you're not clear yet, you will be. The next step will be revealed. It can't not be revealed. You are so wise. <laughs> This has been amazing to just sit here with you. And Aww. I know that um, there are a lot of teachers out there in the world, but as far as just the essence of who you are and mm. the tone of your voice and how you're able to really just share knowledge in such a compassionate, really gentle and empowering way. I've been so at peace just listening to you speak about my design here. Yay. That's, thank you. That is, that's why I do this work. It's really why I do it. And I just love that you saw that and received it. I, thank you. That really means a lot. I just love hanging out with you. Can't wait to have you on the West coast. And um, yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited for you. Well, thank you again. I'm just going to stop my share screen here and say, Thank you so much for your energy, your presence. You guys, if you are uh, listening to this and you are resonating with what Julia is saying, find her at higherplaybook.com. I'll have her contact information in the show notes. Um, she's amazing. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to, to stay in connection with you and see how it evolves over the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to check in with you in a couple of weeks and just see, you know, there's the right environment and following your gut, kind of getting in your body and remembering to the present moment. And every time you start to go, Ooh, this is a pattern. I smell something. It's like, can you smell the roses right here in the moment and trust that and have that be enough and just, just practice that discernment. Oh, that's that past pattern. What's happening right now. So those would be like your three little things to be paying attention to as you move forward. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so grateful you, Chris, and um, I look forward to see you when I come out to the West Coast. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. Love you, girl. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode of Living Design Podcast. Head over to chrisprochaska.com and check out those resources I have for you to expand your energy intelligence and boost your creative potential, all in alignment with your design. Remember, choose goals that are worthy of you and your natural energetic design. It's a hell of a lot more fun to live that way than trying to be someone you're not. You've got a genius that can only come through you. Wouldn't now be a good time to share it? Until next time, take care.